gene present inside the viral genome. So now let's talk a little bit about the lytic cycle and how the lytic cycle actually proceeds. Now the mode of action of the crow depressor is very very important in uh, controlling the lytic cycle. Right. So what is happening in this picture? Try to figure out uh, and look at uh, look carefully in this picture. Now, the crow depressor binds to the ORC or operator right three. Actually, there are three operators in the right region. Operator one, two, three. R one, two, three is uh, given here. So you can see at first the crow depressor binds to the operator R three, and usually the crow rep depressor is active only when the crow is in the dimer form. So you can find in all these cases the crow is present in the dimer arrangement. Okay, and this thing is called the RNA polymer. This is designated here. Okay, so first this crow depressor or crow dimer binds to the OR3 and it stops the transcription from uh, this PRM through the transcription from PR continues in this case. So it will block the transcription from this. This particular transcription is blocked, but the transcription at this right hand direction still can go on. Okay, and and this kind of transcription allows uh, this bacteria to be. Uh, it to be inserted inside the lytic pathway of their life cycle. Okay, now the, when the concentration of the crow depressor kind of increasing, right? Now as you can see in this in this right hand side, there is a gene called crow. So crow is kind of controlling its own synthesis. Now as the it is as it is turning on the genes or the synthesis of gene products or mRNAs in this right hand direction, it is also enhancing the synthesis of crow proteins. So more synthesis here will be done and here it is kind of positive feedback loop which is controlling the production of many crow due to the presence of crow dimer here in this OR3. Now as the crow proteins start to increase there, the concentration of crow proteins start to increase, the crow protein can go and furthermore they will start to bind in this OR2 region, right? Now this leads to the turning down of the transcription for PR. So as a result of that, the, the transcription at this direction start to halt. Now again, when the crow protein reaches a particular concentration and it is kind of binding with OR2, it is telling that no further crow protein is needed. So it is shutting its own transcription down, right? So it is kind of again controlling its own transcription and here via negative feedback loop. So what we can see here, crow is acting as a master controller of its own uh, transcription via positive as well as negative feedback, right? Now at much higher concentration of crow protein, a third dimer can also bind with this OR1 region here, okay? And due to this all effectiveness, it will block the synthesis of left hand side genes. As a result, the virus actually insert into the lytic cycle of their life cycle, okay? Now synthesis of proteins necessary for the replication of lambda genome and formation of head and tail, and especially the proteins that are present here, for the head protein region and this is for the tail and all of the genes that are present here remember it, all of the proteins are termed as uh, the name of the alphabetical order a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r and all these different order proteins are present here now all these proteins are responsible for producing some of them are responsible for producing head some of them are responsible for producing tail okay but then after producing head and tail it is a very important job to assemble this head and tail and finally, what we prepare, we prepare our mature phage. Now, before that, what we can produce, if the phage already already been produced their own genetic material or DNA via the replication process, then we take this DNA out of uh, out from the host cell and start to package it inside this phage. Head. Okay, that's how the pro everything is done. Here. Now, the replication of the lambda genome. How the lambda lambda genome replication is actually carried out. Now usually the replication of lambda genome uh, can be carried in two different ways. One is the theta mode of replication as you can see here in this picture. Another one is the rolling circle replication something like that which you can see in this picture. Right? Now in this case it is very important to switch between this theta mode of replication and then the rolling circle mode of replication. Now usually it's a, it's a general process of lambda uh, genome to carry out the theta mode of replication after after taking entry inside the host cell. For example, here using the cos site, it forms a circular DNA. Now, once it forms a circular DNA from the origin of replication site, the transcription begins and it starts to produce the RNA. Right now, as it is start producing RNAs, it is also being translated into a product called gene O product. Now, the gene O that is present there, it is responsible for uh, helping in the theta mode of replication. So the gene O product will come and it will bind to 
a certain region of the DNA and it starts uh, to make a kind of theta like structure inside the DNA. So, as it is making the theta like structure via the process called theta mode of replication, theta uh, replication is done. After the theta replication, it can uh, make a copy of its own circular DNA. This is a general way of replication uh, of the lambda phage. But now, when it requires uh, to process all the genome inside the host uh, virus, in, inside the progeny virus, uh, to carry out the lytic phage, a lytic cycle, it needs to shift the replication scheme from rolling from this theta mode of replication to the rolling circle mode of replication, right? So theta to rolling circle, rolling circle, it for the lytic cycle, lytic phase. So for lytic phase, it requires to shift from theta to rolling circle mode. Now in this case, uh, once it, it is uh, duplicating its uh, circular DNA. Then it later uses the GAM and, and other products like GAM inhibits the RecBC uh, protein. So as it is inhibiting the RecBC, finally it will uh, block the synthesis pathway via the theta mode. It will start the rolling circle mode of replication. Now as the rolling circle mode of usually what is going on, RecBC is uh, the important protein which is blocking the rolling circle mode of replication. And it is allowing the theta mode of replication. Right Now as the GAM is expressing during this lytic phase, Due to the binding of crow, remember, due to the binding of crow here, it is, sorry, where is it? Due to the binding of crow, it is in, in enhancing the genes that are present in right hand side to be expressed more. And there is a gene called GAM that is present in this right hand side. So as it is expressing here, so this GAM will go, it will block uh, the effectivity of RegBC. So as it is blocking the activity of RegBC, it is telling that yes, you can go from theta mode to the rolling circle mode because previously reg BC was blocking the theta to rolling circle mode conversion. Now, as the reg BC is getting cleaved or it is getting blocked, now blocked by GAM, now it can convert itself into the rolling circle mode. So, rolling circle mode of trans, uh, trans replication goes on, and as it is going on, it is providing and creating more and more copies of the same gene. So, what it is pr providing actually, so if I look at here, it is actually providing, so let, let me watch this, yeah, so where is it, so it is, it is actually providing us, kind of, so let me, it is, it is kind of replicating, rolling like that, and what it is providing, let's say the genome of the phage is actually from this to this section, and it is having a kind of, so it is making more copies of the same gene, and at the both the terminal, what they are having, they are having an important site called the cos site. Remember, cos site is start to form in both the terminal so that after the production of this uh, many copy of the gene in same stretch of the genome, which is called the concatimer, you know that it is called the concatimer. So concatimer usually forms here. After the formation of this concatimer, what they will do? So concatimer means we have a long stretch of DNA and same type of genome is repeating, and both the terminal we are having cos sites here like that. So cos here, cos here. So cos sites are present both the terminals. So the packaging will begin. Head will be uh, there, and they start to package section of this gene by cutting or cleaving this gene out, and inside this phage head, and what he produce is what he produce here is a mature phage, mature lambda, right? So that's how the mature lambda is kind of generated here. Okay. And during this packaging, which is very, very important, uh, it, it requires then a uh, first is to assemble this head particle, right? And we know there are protein regions uh, present to produce this head particles in the lambda genome. So before the production of this head particles, what we are having here, we are having first 42 kd head subunit. And then using this common host cell GROEL and GROES system, this 42 kd head subunit proteins are kind of arranged together to produce what is called a shell assembly. And it is called the prohead 1, which is a very crude form of the PAS head. Now, during this time, they require much more proteins and far, further more cleavage to finally generate prohead 2, which is slightly modified version of prohead 1. Now, from this prohead 2, uh, this is the time where this head is kind of coming to the contact of concatimer. Uh, and, and the packaging and the maturation of head is kind of going on simultaneously, right? The packaging is kind of going on with enzymes, terminase enzymes, and this prohead is kind of mature. 
the ds dna is kind of entered inside the head this is very very important that before the fully maturation of the phage head it requires to in insert the gene segment or the genome segment of phage inside the head right so dna is kind of injected there after the injection uh, the head is kind of matured and then the cross linking of head is being conducted and the head is finally made it head 2 okay so that's how the whole process can be done okay now in this case if the double stranded dna is not injected inside the uh, pro head 2 the pro head is kind of disassembled and dissociated in this case okay so that's very very important that the ds dna is kind of inserted inside this pro head during this maturation okay now let's talk about the packaging of lambda genome inside the phage head in much more detail as you can see here this is the section this is the section at the terminal we are having uh, cos sites and we are having this pro head coming in so pro head is kind of coming in and the protein called gpf1 is also there and cos sites are present at both the terminals as you can see in this picture so cos is here cos is here and then it requires nu1 protein now nu1 protein is kind of guide protein let me write it's a kind of guide protein which is required uh, during the packaging of uh, the pass genome inside the pass head okay so it's kind of bound with with this head and the dna packaging region is giving the guidance to this phage genome to be inserted inside the uh, phage head okay and at the terminal there are proteins called q and b that are being attached there then as they start the packaging and for the packaging they require energy and the energy is supplied from atp hydrolysis so atp is getting hydrolyzed and they start to package it and while packaging you can see here clearly that the pro head is also matured into a mature head so it's a pro head previously pro head of phage now it's a matured head here so maturation of head is also going on simultaneously during this packaging but the packaging initiation is important uh, to further modify the pro head into the matured head right so as this packaging is going on atp is required and hydrolysis is providing the energy after a certain time when it reaches the terminal of the cos site it will, cle it will be cleaved there due to the presence of the protein gpd and also the other proteins like gpw gpf2 and other tail proteins will be there they will come and attach to this region and finally they will uh, provide the mature phage progeny particles okay but this kind of packaging will continue from one cos site to another cos site in both the terminals Okay, that's how they can usually know how to package and which is the amount of DNA to be packaged. Here comes the bacteriophage tail assembly pathway. So we know here it is the very beginning of the tail, which is immature part. Only GP or they are always called GP or glycoproteins actually. So GP and this is called GPJ, GPI, KL and MP and all these different proteins are there. So three GPJ proteins first assemble to provide this kind of immature structure. Then GPI, GPL, GPK and all of this kind start to arrange together to finally make a kind of tail structure like that. It is first called the U minus tail or U minus tail. Now then what they add, they add the GPU protein which is important and after adding the GPU protein they produce the tail called Z minus tail. Now then they add GPZ, then produce uh, what you call a matured uh, tail. So we cannot call a phage tail matured until and unless it it is having two important proteins. One is the U proteins, another one is the Z proteins. Now usually uh, U, Z, and V, both of these proteins are important. V is required for the virulence factors, and U is required to control that and other things so to understand rest of this protein function you can uh, find small video in my youtube channel regarding this bacteriophage entry to release bacteriophage lambda entry to release in my youtube animated video you can find it and you can get the answer okay so once they have arranged this gpu gpz and finally produce a mature tail now the tail will be directly assembled with the head particle of the phage and the tail and head particle of the phage assembly uh, will take place uh, simply via uh, random process so tail and head will be attached randomly by the brownian motion theory they just attach there and then the fully matured phage is ready to infect ready to be lysed out